Hey guys, Pete here. It's time for my Watchmen Episode 7 trailer breakdown. The episode is titled An Almost Religious Awe, which is the first one I haven't been able to pin down as far as where it comes from. It may be connected to the author William Walker Atkinson, who was influential in the New Thought movement in the late 19th and 20th century, but I can't say for sure. This video will break down the official HBO promo for Episode 7 scene by scene, and it will contain spoilers for everything that's happened in the series thus far. I'm also going to talk about the supplemental materials, theories, other trailers that have been put out, and the original graphic novel throughout, so you've been officially warned for spoilers. I have to mention the supplemental materials from the PDpedia before I jump into the trailer. In a memo they released, which was written by Lori, we learned that while she was on her nostalgia trip that Angela was talking the whole time. Essentially everything we learned watching episode 6, Lori knows as well. That includes the fact that Will Reeves hypnotized Chief Crawford to hang himself. Lori's on her way to interview the chief's wife, and she sent Agent PD to go find Looking Glass and bring him in. The episode 7 trailer opens with the flashback scene to Saigon in the 1980s. The first shot is a street scene that doesn't give away much in the way of details. There's a closing shop with some street vendors out in front of it. There is a sign that says 89, which probably gives away the year, but the dates on the Vietnam part of the story are a little bit confusing as far as I can tell. Since we're going to find out what year it is in a couple of days, I don't think it really seems like something I want to explore here. The next shot is of Angela and her grandmother, June, sitting together in a cafe. We know it's June because we saw her at the end of the last episode. She says, tell me something about yourself, Angela, to which she replies, I'm going to be a police officer. It sounds like they're just getting to know each other for the first time. The place looks Western rather than Vietnamese based on what we see on the table, which could be interesting, but the fact that they meet each other and Angela knew she wanted to be a police officer from an early age seemed like what's important as far as this scene is concerned. We see that the badge says Saigon Police Officer. Then there's a flash of scenes. First we have Angela's parents smiling. It looks like Marcus is in the army and that could explain why they live overseas. We met Marcus Abar as a child in the last episode, which gave some context to the speech he gave to his daughter about masks in the Comic-Con trailer. He said, people who wear masks are dangerous. You should be scared of them. Angela asks why and he says, because they're hiding something. Marcus knows this because he's Will's son, and he saw how that got in the way of his parents' relationship. From there, we see two Saigon police officers in front of Angela. I guess here is as good a time as any to point out that the Vietnam she grew up in is probably very different than the one in our world. First of all, Saigon isn't called that anymore. After the unification, it was renamed Ho Chi Minh City. We see that they have the 51-star American flag on their uniforms, and it stands out that one of the officers is female, because that would have been very unlikely in the 80s in real world Vietnam. That cuts to a flash of Crawford's badge with the drop of blood, and then a shot of young Angela looking at something off screen. The look in the police officers make me think that this is probably related to her parents dying when she was little. That could also be why June showed up, or she may have been inspired to become a police officer because of this female police officer she met at this time. I can't remember her giving details on how her parents died, but this feels like it could be related to an accident. From there, we come back to the present. We see Angela staring and hear Lady True saying her name. In voiceover, we hear Lady T say, I have a secret plan to save humanity and it starts in Oklahoma. There's a sequence of shots, including one from the top of the Millennium Clock looking down on the Vivarium, which is connected to a large building. A couple of shots of Angela looking at a large globe. We see her looking at the US and Tulsa where they are. In the season one trailer, we saw some of these images with Lady T saying, you need to help stop the 7th Cavalry, to which Angela responded from doing what? So in this period of time when she's there, we can imagine that she'll explain her plan to save humanity and perhaps how it involves the 7th Cavalry and what they're planning to do. I'll come back to Lady True after the scene by scene because we got a lot of new information about her from the PD files. Next, we see Angela ask, what does this have to do with my treatment? And watch Lady T inject something into her arm through the medical device we see her wearing throughout the trailer. Angela looks worried about what's happening, and we get a close-up of her eyes. This is definitely the coolest transition of the trailer, as we see her eyes turn to stained glass windows, which turn out to be in the room where Adrian Veidt is on trial in his prison on Europa. Adrian is decked out in his full Ozymandias costume. Not surprisingly, most 
everyone we see is a Phillips or a Crookshanks. There's a jury in a gallery full of them. And some of the photos that HBO released of this, that looks like there may be some different people, different actors in the background, but I don't know for sure. We hear all rise for the game warden and see that Adrian is the only one who doesn't stand up. He's definitely got shackles on. That might be the reason. But overall, we see his face several times and he looks pretty uninterested in the proceedings. The game warden, who's just another Phillips with a mustache and a mask, is sitting on the bench and says, if you have anything to say in your defense, say it now. There's not much new here, as we've seen several indications that this was going to go down. I'll talk more about the trial after the scene by scene because most of the stuff comes from different trailers. Then we see it flash on the screen, the text, only three episodes left. I was a little bit gutted when I saw that, when that idea hit me that there's only three episodes left. In that sequence, it appears that Agent PD has arrived at Looking Glass's bunker. There was a different shot of this in previous trailers where we see dead 7K members on the ground both just have Dale looking around with a flashlight with no sign of LG though. Either way, it looks like we're going to find out what happened at the end of LG's episode. There's a shot of a truck getting into an accident with a car. At first I thought this was his truck, but on closer inspection, it looks unrelated. After that, there's a shot of what looks like a pretty big explosion. There's a guy who doesn't look like anyone we know in the foreground and not much else. I'd like to point out here that it says something about a show when you can have an image like this in the trailer and have no idea what it might be. If I had to guess, I would say this might be related to the 7K and their watch batteries and teleporters, but it could really be anything. It could be at any time. From there, we see Angela is up and walking around by herself. She bangs on a door, and it appears she's looking for her grandfather. She says, I know you're in there. I took your pills. And then she pushes her way in. She looks surprised at whatever she discovers inside, but we can't see what it is, and the trailer ends there. The trial looks fun and we can start there. We know that Vite got himself in trouble with the game warden when he traveled outside of his boundaries, but what is the point of the actual trial? Based on other images we've seen, it looks like evidence will be presented about the squid, and I'm not sure what that says about what they're trying to accomplish or who actually put him there in the first place. The most likely candidates are Dr. Manhattan or Lady True. Both have the power to do this, but it isn't clear why they would go to these lengths based on what we know. We're missing a piece of this puzzle. That the game warden is played by Tom Meissen, who plays Phillips, is interesting because he behaves like he was created for a different role, but I'm not sure that makes either candidate more likely. At this point, what's exciting about this trial is that we'll learn more about what's going on because the story will have to play out in the next two episodes. And if you're worried that this is going nowhere, I'll put a couple of links in the description to interviews where Lindelof assures us that we will find out how Adrian's story connects to what's going on in Tulsa. One big question I was left with after watching this trailer was how or why is Angela at Lady True's? A simple explanation could be that after taking Will's nostalgia, she had to be treated with her own memories or something that they developed for situations like these. True would be the person to talk to about nostalgia and the side effects of taking a massive dose of it made for someone else. We did learn a lot of things about her from the PD files, sort of. I say sort of because this article is presented as a gossip column where they throw out a bunch of rumors about the trillionaire and her assistant responds. To me, it sounds like the assistant is probably Bianne, who plays her daughter. One of the biggest revelations is that Lady T's mother wrote a book about parenting and that her name was also Bianne. I looked into this and it's not common to name a child after your ancestors in Vietnamese culture. It's actually the opposite of how we do it in the West. It would be avoided as it wouldn't be considered respectful for the deceased ancestors. This feels like it fits with the theory that Bianne could be a clone of Lady T's mother, which people have been talking about since she had the dream about her village being burned when she was hooked up to the IV. What's really funny about this article is that the writers came together and thought about the theories that we would come up with as fans and then use those as the questions. They asked questions like, is the Millennium Clock really a time machine? And whether the comedian is Lady True's father. By giving the kind of answers an assistant would give to a gossip column, they can really play with us. 
For example, the assistant doesn't directly deny that the comedian is True's father, but says they did meet during the war, saying that his battalion's uniquely warm demeanor made quite an impression on her. So they address the fan theory that Eddie Blake was True's father and inject the idea that he probably just burned her village in reality. There's a lot of background information. She has four doctorate degrees she earned by the time she was 15 years old. They're in astrophysics, nuclear fission, nanochemistry, and bio engineering. She became a billionaire from creating nostalgia and settled the large class action suit that happened after people started abusing it. She launched 50 Voyager class probes into the galaxy, which could be related to the satellite Adrian Veidt was trying to signal for help. I wish I could say all this information makes it clear what Lady True's plans are. In my opinion, it doesn't. One bit of information that jumps out is that she has sent everyone in the Tri-County area around Tulsa a brand new HDTV. Since she's working with Will, who is in possession of mind control technology, this could be fairly important. The two most popular theories about Lady T's plans were, one, an empathy bomb or some sort of event that would make the world a better place, and two, that she just wants revenge for the Vietnam War. The motivations for each idea are pretty far apart. Nothing in this article points us decidedly in either direction. We also know a lot more about Will after the last episode, but beyond wanting to wipe out Cyclops, it's not clear how his ideas have evolved over the years or how he came to be working with Lady T in the first place. We know he used the mind control device to get Judd to kill himself and that the FBI is currently trying to track him down for that. We know that in 1955, Senator Keene's father gave the martial feats of Comanche horsemanship painting to Crawford's father as a passing of the torch kind of gesture, signing the letter with the Cyclops symbol. We know that Keene Jr. and Crawford were pulling the strings behind the scenes for the 7th Cavalry and that they are staging something that's going to happen soon. It's a lot of different factions and a lot of balls in the air, and I'm excited to see where things go. The other big mystery of the trailer is what Angela will discover when she pushes her way into that room. I've seen ideas like evidence of cloning her grandfather or other new technology related to her endgame. If you've listened to the official podcast from HBO, Damon Lindelof said, we won't find out what crashed on the farm until the finale, so I guess we can rule that out, but everything else seems to be on the table, and it feels like it's going to be an important piece as to what Lady T is actually up to. I'm gonna wrap this up here. Let me know in the comments what you think after watching this trailer, what are you excited about for episode seven? Where are you sitting with the theories and the mysteries that we have going around? Only three episodes left, so we're going to be getting some answers. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching. I will talk to you soon.